Harley JK with a 5.3 L83 LT engine. This is a great engine, just like all the other LS and LT engines. And as far as my favorite engine goes, I guess I really can't say I have a favorite because I have opinions about what my favorite engine is depending on the application. In a light JK, the 5.3 is probably my favorite engine because it gets the job done. It's inexpensive. So in a light JK with smaller tires, let's say 32 inch, I'd say the 5.3 is probably my first choice. If you have a heavier JK, you really can't beat the 6.0 Gen 4 engine. Low cost, iron block, very reliable, inexpensive, runs on regular gas. So I guess you could say that would be my favorite engine for a heavy JK that you want to get the job done so you can get down the highway and it's economical. For a performance engine where you have over 400 horsepower, the LS3 is hard to beat. I guess I could say my favorite performance crate engine in a JK would be an LS3. And it really is awesome in a JK. You can get the Gen 4 truck motors like the L92, L94, and L9H. And those are great motors too. In fact, I have an L9H in my own JK. They cost a little bit less than the LS3. They're no longer in production, so you're going to have a hard time finding a used one. They're out there, but the prices are a little bit high. And then we move into the Gen 5 motors, the 5.3 and the 6.2. And they both perform awesome, but again, they they perform differently. The Gen 5 6.2 is, is a torque monster. It'll pull 40s really, really well in a heavy JK. Large tires under a heavy load. I think the Gen 5 6.2 is a great engine. The Gen 5 5.3 is also proving to be a very viable engine. It has a lot of the characteristics of the Gen 4 6.0. It is all aluminum, it does have direct injection, VVT, constant VVT, and, and air fuel management, which the 6 liter does not have. So I'd say it's somewhat of a substitute for the 6 liter, the Gen 4 6 liter. It is also available in a, with an 8 speed if you're looking to, to get the extra gears. So every LS or LT engine has its own benefit. You wouldn't want to take a Gen 4 5.3 and throw it in a in a 7,000 pound JKUR with tons and rock rails and skid plates and 40s. It's just not going to perform as well as a 6.0 or a 6.2. If you want that extra muscle car type performance, you want 450-ish horsepower, get an LS3. They're out there. They're readily available. They're very well supported in the aftermarket. It's a hard to beat for a performance engine. If you want the latest and greatest technology and maybe get a little bit better mileage and a little bit better performance on the bottom end, get a Gen 5 engine. When you properly match the engine to your JK, they just drive awesome. If you don't match it properly, like let's say you put a 5.3 and a heavy JK, they still run great, just not as good as if you had pro chosen the proper engine. If you put an LS3 in a two-door with 29 inch tires, which we have actually done, you got basically a muscle car. But to be reasonable, most guys just want to move their JK up a mountain grade like this one here. And you can see this 5.3 has no problem at all pulling this JK up to the speed limit. With a V6 going up the same grade, it would be a little bit of a struggle getting up to highway speed. And if that's all you want, if you want to just get your JK down the road at the speed limit comfortably and cruise 75 miles an hour with your family, then you don't need an LS3. You don't need a Gen 5 6.2. Choose the engine that best matches your JK. So again, light JK small tires, Gen 4 5.3. If you're on a budget, you want to run regular gas, 6.0 L96 is hard to beat. Gen 4 engine, can haul heavy weight, has good performance, about 375 horsepower. You want a little more performance than that, get a Gen 4 truck motor, L92, L94, L98. Excellent engines, they're no longer in production, so you're most likely going to have to get a used one. You want to spend a little bit more money, you want the all aluminum Corvette engine, 430 to 450 ish horsepower, get an LS3. LS3 is just hard to beat all around for performance and economy, availability, reliability. It's a great all-around engine. You want technology? Move into the Gen 5 motors. They're going to cost you a little bit more. In some cases, the 5.3 Gen 5s are proving to be lower cost than some of the Gen 4 engines as GM gets them out there. When I did my first 5.3 swaps, the engines cost significantly more than the Gen 4 engines, but the prices have come way down. If you do want that technology and you do want that lower-end torque that the Gen 5 motors offer, 
then they make an excellent choice. I will say I would not buy a Gen 5 engine if you want to go out and race it. If you want to go out and run it at the track, if you want to go out and run it in Baja or off-road, the Gen 5 engines have a lot of moving parts. They have air fuel management lifters. They have direct injection. There's just a lot of stuff going on. They have a lot more that can go wrong in the Gen 4s at this point. And the Gen 4s have been out now for about a decade, so they're pretty much sorted and rationalized. So I'd stick with a Gen 4 motor, a simple engine, it's a 6 liter, an LS3, if you want to go out and do a lot of performance driving. One thing about these LT engines is you do need to gear them up, especially with the 8-speed transmission. All you're doing is spinning up the engine and wasting gas if you short gear one of these JKs with an LT. These LTs have so much bottom end torque you need to take advantage of it. That means 410s with 35s. Or you could probably even get away with 373s on 35s if your JK isn't too heavy. You got 40s, go with 488s. These LTs really respond well to the tall gearing and get better economy. We get a lot of JKs in with short gears like this one, so we're running 2400 RPM at 70, and that's just wasting gas, like I said. There's no reason to spin that motor up. Since these LTs put out so much bottom end torque, you might as well take advantage of that and gear properly. Gen 4s pretty much drive like engines have driven for the last 30 years. Very linear power delivery, decent bottom end torque. You rev them up and they build their power up as they get into the power band. The Gen 5s somewhat change that. What you notice is your power band's down low. Right off idle, you get a burst of power, similar to a diesel. Then as you rev it up, the torque curve stays flat as you approach four or 5,000 RPM, then it drops off. You do need to drive the Gen 5s different than you drive the Gen 4s. Once you get used to it, and this is something that I find, I have to drive a vehicle for a bit, maybe 20, 30, 40 miles before I get used to it. Because every vehicle is a little bit different, but the Gen 5s definitely do drive different than the Gen 4s and pretty much everything before it.